Take me a second to get everything going. Hey, Susan. And there's Christine. All right, okay, let me get YouTube going now too. I hope YouTube's working today. The, um, Sunday I went live and, it, and I, it wasn't working, so I had to actually download the video, which I apologize because I know there was people waiting, but um, we eventually got it on there. So here is YouTube. So how is everybody today? I hope you're having beautiful weather like we are today. Finally, it seems like spring is here. And there we got YouTube going. So, um, but yeah, um, it, I went outside to let the dog out right before I came down here, and it's gorgeous outside. Well, let's see. Got one more thing I got to do here. Sorry. And as you come in, be sure and let me know you're there. And especially if you're a, a first timer, let me know where you're from. I love to I love to learn that, learn a little bit more about you. Hey Amanda, hey Jamie, how are you? Okay, all right. I think we've got all the housekeeping things done now. And I as I keep on saying this, I wish there were things that we could do ahead of time to do that to get rid of all that. I don't know technology stuff before we actually go live but unfortunately we can't right now but hopefully that'll be on the horizon hey Mary hey Beverly Deborah and Butch how are you guys today thank you for being here so like I said I um, have we're gonna do the easy bow maker today we have not done that for a while and you know we we try to rotate we do the pro bow we do the easy bow and then we do some handmade bows so we'll plan on next week doing some handmade bows but today we'll be doing the Easy Bow Maker, and uh, if you are not familiar with it, it's a great gadget if you are, number one, if you're new to bow making, it's, it's a very easy tool to learn, and number two, if your hands bother you, or like if you've got um, arthritic hands, or uh, you know, your hands cramp, something like that, when you're trying to make bows, it's a great tool to consider. And um, this is the board actually and you can get them um, I actually I have a link on uh, shopliketerry.com but you can also get them off Amazon you can get them um, I don't know if I've seen them at Hobby Lobby or not I feel like I have but I wouldn't swear to it I've had mine for a long time um, but anyway uh, right here this is where we're going to be making the bow these pegs right here, you can see there's three of them. We're just gonna be making it with two though. Right here is where all the action's gonna happen. This little uh, peg here, I get a lot of questions about. It is for teeny little bows, like baby bows. I've never used it. So all the action's gonna happen right here. They do get splayed apart pretty easily. And you can see where mine, I've kind of beaten these down, my pegs with a, I usually just take Every now and then I just take my big uh, set of pliers and I just hammer them down a little bit like that and tighten them up. But by the time we get done making a bow today with it, the first bow, these are going to be loose again. I hear that the newer ones, they've actually got them really tight now, um, but, but that's my situation with mine. Um, we're going to put our ribbon here and we'll talk about that more here in a minute. It also has measurements along the edges. like as you come out from the center of the bow has measurements that you can use as a guide to to try to get your loops reasonably close it doesn't have to be perfect um, and there can be a little bit of play with it just because of the nature of of the pegs and such um, but it's a pretty good guide and i use that to measure my tails as well and again we'll talk about that more as we get along um, i do like to talk a little bit about the ribbon choices that we made um, let me go ahead and turn you guys down before we get started on that so you'll have a bird's eye view. I might need to bring you up just a little bit here. Try and get you straightened out. Hope I'm not making you seasick there. Okay. 
Let me play around with this a second. I should have had this raised up, but I tell you, I was, like I said, I just got back from the dentist, and I've been rushing around trying to get everything ready <laughs> and hoping that my the, my lips would start working again. <laughs> All right, so anyway, um, you know, bow making's not just about the mechanics. It's also how we go to select our ribbons. And the first one I want to work with today is this lemon set. Now, if, if you've been following me, you might know that I've been waiting on some ribbons to come in. And um, finally, I got to the point where I'm just going to go ahead and go with what I have. So I wanted to show you, um, and you might have seen this video before, back whenever I was at market and I was actually selecting these ribbons that I'm waiting on. Um, I start out, I always recommend this, I start out with one focal ribbon when I'm just talking about bows, okay? And this is, we're just going to make this bow, I'm going to list it in my shop just as a bow to sell. Now, um, if you've got a design you've got in mind you're going to make, uh, you're going to use your, your select your ribbon around your design, like your, if you're doing a wreath, you're going to choose your colors and choose your ribbons off of the sign the florals, uh, maybe you've got a wreath attachment, or now sometimes I might even uh, make a ribbon or a uh, wreath starting with the ribbon, if I got a ribbon I really like. So so you, you want to start with one focal point, and this was actually the ribbon that I started with, and I, um, you know, lemons are very popular, and I was picking my summer stuff so we started with this one and I look at it and of course it has the yellow with the lemons but if you look closely it has not just one shade of the yellow it's got um, more of a center um, more of a, a brighter yellow as well as on the edge here but then if you look in here around the edges this yellow is also a little bit darker Okay, so we want to keep that in consideration when we're looking for our ribbons to, to coordinate with that. We also, we have got this lemon that has the white in it. And again, there's a little bit of the darker yellow and then the lighter yellow. We've got black, of course. Uh, black and yellow really pop on a design and lots of people seem to like it, especially for summer. Um, we've got the, the leaves with the green and again it's got a lighter green and it has a darker green around the edges. So all of those things need to be taken into consideration. So I knew, like I said, I started with this ribbon and I just took this ribbon and I walked around the showroom and tried to find matching or coordinated coordinating ribbons. Now I knew I wanted another two and a half inch ribbon so I already pretty much had in my mind which one I wanted because I'd used this last year and I really like this ribbon. It, it really pops black and yellow again really pops in a design and um, I knew I wanted to find that ribbon. Well that's one of mine that didn't come in okay so I go over to my stash and I'm looking around to see what I've got in my stash and I've got a very similar ribbon it has the yellow of course and then it has the black on the edges and I can easily substitute that to go with this okay alright so I've got my two ribbons I've got my two two and a half and then, um, for this particular bow I wanted two one and a half inch ribbons too now I've got you could say I've got two patterns going here. I like to mix, mix in solids with my patterns, but that being said, this ribbon really gives you a lot of leeway because it reads as a solid. There's so much of the solid yellow, it reads as a solid. Okay, so I'm thinking, okay, I need, my colors are pretty much limited here unless I wanted to throw in a blue, you know, blue goes real well with, um, the, the yellow and the black and that so in its popular combination so I could have put that in also but I wanted to stay with the black and yellow theme so I'm looking for a solid you know what I say I'm looking for a solid but now that I think about it I came back and I counted that as my solid I went with a stripe I, I found this black and white striped ribbon again that's really going to make it pop now I would not want to bring in a solid black ribbon because it's going to make it too dark. I wanted something that was going to really bring a lot of vibrance to this. And again, since this reads as a solid, 
I got it plenty of room to put in another pattern. And uh, this is not a busy pattern though. Um, whereas something like this, this is more of a busy pattern. This one is not a busy pattern. So again, I'm quieting the eye down just with, with selecting a less busy pattern. All right, now I know I want another one and a half inch ribbon. And again, I used this ribbon last year. I loved it, and so I sought out to find that and thought those all matched perfectly. Again, these two ribbons did not come in, so we're gonna go with it, what I had in my stash. So I took, I took this ribbon and this ribbon over to my stash that I've got over in the, in the corner, and I knew, I'm waiting on this black and white stripe. I already knew I did not have that. Any, I don't have any of the, that um, kind of stripe. But I do have this. And you might want to say it's a horizontal stripe, but it's not. Um, it, it's a vertical stripe. And that I'm not going to muddy your mind with that right now. But um, I always thought the wrong thing. But th this is a, a vertical stripe. And I'm going to go ahead and pair that. It doesn't have as much white as I would like to, but still, it, it's going to work. And then I had a very similar ribbon to the, the scalloped edge here, and we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll pair that with it, okay? And, and this is another ribbon that I already know lots of people like it. It's one of my favorite summer ribbons. So that's how I choose, um, you know, based on, like I said, you start with one ribbon, and then just build out from there, okay? All right, and if you are new here too, know that I, when I'm making the bows, I don't look up at questions. I'll look at, at questions after I get done making the bow. I have a really bad problem with getting distracted. <laughs> so um, I'll look up. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. I'm happy to answer for you, okay? All right, now, we're gonna go ahead and get started making this bow. And again, if you're just joining in, let me back up just a little bit and straighten you out. There we go. <clears throat> again, this is where all the action is gonna happen, right here in these two pegs, okay? And we're gonna put our ribbon over here on the spool. And <clears throat> I'm gonna start out, I really want this to be the star of the show, this ribbon right here. And so I'm gonna start out with this in the background and then put this up a little bit more forward so that it's sure to be seen. Let me go ahead and open it up here. I haven't made a thing for lemon decor yet this year. <laughs> Need to get busy on it. It's gonna be gone before, past time before too long. All right, now notice when I put that on that spool that I'm putting it with the ribbon going off and away from me. And that just keeps the ribbon out of your way. Uh, I mean, it's not a deal breaker either way if you choose to put it the other way, but it just is a lot more handy. All right, let me zoom in here for you. Okay. As I said, we're gonna start out with this one. And on this particular ribbon, I'm gonna, or on this bow, I'm sorry, we're gonna make our tail about 14 inches. So I'm coming here, and remember, we've got measurements here. And I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna find about eight inches on one side. <clears throat> and I'm gonna find about six on the other. So we got 14 inches. The whole board itself is 20 inches. But I want about a 14 inch tail, so I'm over here. And I'm gonna keep my finger here, or a finger here, I should say, just to mark where I want my tail to start. And when I put this ribbon down in the spool, or in the pegs like this, I want the good side of the ribbon to face it away from me. If you see, there's a pattern on one side. You can kind of see it from the back, but there's a back, this is the back, this is the front. I want the front facing away from me. And again, I've still got my thumb there where my tail starts. I'm gonna bring this down vertically, and as I go, I'm gonna twist it. I'm gonna push it down. Okay, so there's our tail, okay? <clears throat> Get me a plenty of ribbon off. Now for this bow, I wanna make about a uh, five inch bow loop. So I'm gonna come over here to five inches. I'm gonna put my thumb there and just kinda mark it. Again, I'm gonna put my ribbon down here, good sides facing away from me, 
Okay, I'm going to put it down vertically. I'm going to twist it as I go down, push it down. All right, so we've got our first loop gone, or first loop done. Okay, all right, now I'm going to come over here. You know what? I got that a little bit too big. I said five inches, I had it about six, so let me twist this a little better here now. There, that's better. All right, now I'm going to come over here to five inches also. I'm going to put my thumb there, okay, just like this. And I'm going to put my ribbon down vertically, good size face and away from me. Keep my thumb there. And this, I'm just going to put one loop on either side of this ribbon, and I'll explain why here in a minute. But I'm going to keep my thumb there. I'm just going to push this down and kind of scrunch it. Let's open it up. All right, so we've got our first loops there. Okay, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to measure out my tail, compare it with the other one, and we're just going to trim that off. Now, if you want to go ahead and dovetail it now, you can. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to take this ribbon. I'm going to fold it in half with the good side or the the uh, wired sides together. Here's your wired side. Here's your folded side. And I'm going to cut this at an angle. When I open it up, it's going to have a V shape. And it just gives a nice clean edge to your ribbon. Some people call it fish tailing. All right, we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, all right, so we've got our first bow loops done. Now I'm going to come in here with my lemon ribbon. Open it up. And again, I'm putting it on the spool. I'm putting it with the, the ribbon coming off and away from me. Let's go ahead and dovetail it. Again, I'm going to fold the wired sides together, just like that. I'm going to cut it at an angle. Okay, just like that. This is a really pretty ribbon. And again, it's a it's, uh, one-sided ribbon. It has a pattern on one side, not on the other. All right, now I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna make this tail just a little bit shorter than the one before, so I'm gonna just bring it up maybe an inch or so. It's whatever your taste is, okay? I'm gonna come up here. I marked with my thumb about where I need to put that tail. Again, I'm gonna put my uh, good side facing away from me. I'm going to twist it as I go down. Push it down. All right, and this one we're going to make two loops on either side. Okay. All right, I'm going to come in. I'm going to do five inches on this one as well. I've already got five inches measured here with this loop, so I can just use that as my guide. Okay, again, I'm going to go down vertically between these spools or the, between the pegs, good sides facing away. I'm going to twist it. You might have seen me back up and twist that a little again, and that was because I didn't have the twist completed. You want to make sure your ribbon is twisted all the way around a 180 degree, and that's what's going to help your bow loops to hold a little bit stronger. Okay. All right, now we're going to come over here. I'm going to measure it against this one again. Good sides facing away. Okay, just use your thumb there if you want to. All right, I'm going to twist and I'm going to push it down. That twisting, that is what's going to allow the good side of the ribbon to be on the right side. Okay, if we didn't twist it, then it's going to be the wrong side facing us, right? All right, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to repeat the process on this one. Twist it, push it down. And again, I didn't get my twist 180 degrees. And don't fret over it if you don't, because you can fix that later. It's just easier to take care of it now. All right, now this is going to be our last loop, so I do not need to twist it, right? So I want my tail, I want the good side showing. So I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to pinch it. And I always like to, I don't know if I've told you guys, I like to make sure that I've tucked those edges under like that. I don't want the wrong side of the ribbon showing. All right, we're going to push that down. We're going to come over here. We're going to open up our bows. 
or bow loops, I should say. Okay, and I'm wanting that that single loop there. I made this one too big, it looks like. I want the single loop here that we made first. I want that right in between of those other two. And that just kind of separates out these patterns where, where you're better able to appreciate it. It's a beautiful ribbon. We need to let it be showcased. Still is a little bit long there. Let me pull that back in. And that's the luxury of the easy bow. You can actually watch your ribbon or your bow being made and you can make adjustments as you need right when you're when you're doing it and you guys have seen me before I've, I've like gone back and redid part of it before okay now let's come down here we're gonna trim this off just a little bit shorter than the one before and let's go ahead and dovetail it okay all right so we're well on our way here now we're just gonna come back through here and we're gonna complete you know keep following that process and I've got the two I've got the remember I've got the um, Swiss dot and then I've got the black stripe and I'm wanting to uh, between these two I'm going to choose to go ahead with the black stripe first I've got a lot of yellow going on here and I want to separate that out and plus like I said people just love this ribbon the Swiss dot ribbon um, like I do and um, so I want that one to be shown most all right so let's come back in here and we're gonna put this on again with the spool going up and around or the ribbon coming off away from me let's go ahead and dovetail it all right and again I'm gonna bring that ribbon just a little bit shorter with my tail Okay, all right, I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to twist it, good sides facing away from me. And again, I'm going to make one loop with this. Did I get that long enough? Looks like I want it a little bit longer. Okay. Twist it. And this one, I'm going to bring that in about four inches. And... Um, if you've watched me, you've heard this before, but uh, for the new people, I'm at this point, I could move my loops away uh, and I could see where four inches is here, but I'm working on my, my cutting mat here. So what I do, I line these measurements on my board up with my cutting mat so that I can see and estimate where four inches. So four inches for me is going to be around right here. I don't know if you can see that. Four inches about right here for me so I'm going to bring my ribbon out to there I'm going to twist it again we're making one loop on either side for the same purpose that we did it last time I want to separate this uh, Swiss dot ribbon that we're getting ready to put plus it's going to separate these all right I'm going to come down here I'm going to look for four inches again so that's about right here I'm going to come down I don't need to twist last last loop Push it down, come over here, I'm going to cut it, cut the ribbon, cut my tail. Let's go ahead and dovetail it. Okay. All right, and, and I don't know if I've said it yet or not, but every time I'm going to the center, I'm pushing this ribbon down because I want my bow center nice and tight. Okay. All right, now let's do that beautiful Swiss dot ribbon. And we're gonna do two loops of this on either side, okay? Let's go ahead and dovetail. Come down here, we're gonna compare our tails. We're gonna Good side's going to go away from me. Twist it, push it down. All right, and this one I'm going to bring it a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it about three and a half inches. And again, I'm looking at my cutting mat here. 
See where my three and a half inches is, and that's about right there. So I'm going to twist it, push it down. Come over here. I'm going to look for my my um, three and a half or yeah, three and a half inches. So there's four. So there's three and a half. Right there. Twist it, push it down. Now I'm going to compare it to the previous bow loop. Push it down, twist it. And this is my last one, so I don't need to twist it. Compare it with my previous bow loop. Pinch it. Again, I'm going to tuck those edges over. Sit it down in there. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and spread those out. See what it looks like. What I was thinking, I would, if I had brought my little bitty um, 5 8 inch gingham, that would look really pretty right here. I've got a black and white gingham. I'm debating in my head, go and get it. <laughs> I think it'd look really cute. Let me get that real quick. I've really become a fan of these. Um, I think this is 5 8 inch. Yeah, it's 5 8 inch. I've really become a fan of these to put a finishing touch on a bow. And I just feel like it would really make that pop right there in the center. They're a little bit, to me, with the um, Easy Bow Maker, they're a little tough to handle uh, just to keep them, you know, they're, they're not going to fill up this um, these pegs, obviously. I'm just going to make a little tiny one right here. Probably about, let's say, two inches. Two, well, two and a half inches. Let's say that. Push it down. Same thing. And you can see what my, t my spools look like or my pegs. I told you by the time we got done, they'd be right back where they were. And they are. All right, so let's trim this off. Now, we've got our bow made, basically. Now we've got to, you know, uh, secure it. For this much ribbon, I like to use a zip tie. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go underneath the all this ribbon through the pegs. I like to go diagonally through like this. I have a hard time if I start out on the side of it. I, I feel like I make my bow loops uneven then. So I'm going to go underneath all the ribbon diagonally. I'm going to make sure I've got this, um, this little knob here, if you can see that. I'm going to make sure that's pointed toward my feet. Okay, I'm just going to lift it up here. Make sure you've got all the ribbon. I've done that before and you have to, it's not fun when you have to start all over. <laughs> Leaving some of the ribbon on the board. Alright, now I'm going to bring it together here and just cinch it down very lightly. I'm not going to close it all the way yet. And I've got these new zip ties, a new package of them, and they are really tough to really tough to cinch down for some reason. Alright, so I've got all my ribbon. I'm going to pull that up off of the board. Set that out to the side there. I'm going to bring this back around. I'm going to cinch it down a little bit more. I'm try and do it without the pliers. All right, now I'm going to go ahead. Now I'm going to fix all my tails. And I like to start at the bottom and work upward. So we start out with that, that um, yellow with the dots. Now we're going to go to our lemon. Make sure everything's laying the way you want it. Now we'll go to the stripe and the dot. And then we'll go up here to this gingham. Okay? All right, now we'll do the same thing with the bow loops. And remember, I want to make sure that these single loops are in between the two. 
All right, so like this one, I want that one right in the middle. And you'll have to go back to the same ribbons again. I mean, just keep fussing with it till you get the way you want it. And I've still got that one, this one loop still looks long to me. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to pull that in. Oh, that's not it. So I need to go the other side there. Trying to find which one. You just do it real slowly till you see the ribbon. There it goes. Go real slowly till you see the ribbon you want to move. All right, we'll come back over on this side now. Get that back underneath of there. All right, now let's go to the black. Now let's spread these out. Now I'm putting all the single ones I want to go between the two. Okay, just like that. You've got the single, single, single. And I was talking about making sure your bow loops are turned completely. That's what I'm fixing right here. I see one that I did not get done. So I'm just making sure that is turned all the way around. Okay. All right. Now, once you're happy with it, we can go ahead and secure it. I'm going to turn this around, and I'm going to put a pipe cleaner. I like to use brown pipe cleaners because, um, especially this time of year, I'm, most of what I'm working on is grapevine. So I'm, you know, this is going to blend in with the grapevine a little bit easier. So that'll give me something to attach to whatever design I'm making. I'm going to slide that underneath of that zip tie, just like that. I'm going to come back over here, make sure I still got everything where I want it. Let's take that and tighten that down. Okay, all right, now let's trim that off. All right, now, I didn't, I didn't put a finish on these guys. I, mean, I usually just trim these at an angle. I guess, I suppose you could dovetail them if you wanted to, but they're pretty tiny. Now, we still have that zip tie that's visible, so we need to find something that's going to cover it up. If I were using this in a wreath myself, I would not probably feel the need to do that because I usually put leaves or something in there that's going to obscure it, but I'm, I'm going to be selling this, so I want to cover that, okay? So we just pick out one of our ribbons. Um, I think since I've got the black on top here, I think I'll come back with this um, dot ribbon. I think that will look the best. I usually try to pick one of my one and a half inch ribbons. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my scissor, I'm just gonna cut this about nine or 10 inches up. Don't cut it too short. I'm just gonna cut it right in half. I think that looks good enough. All right, now we've got this wired edge and we've got the raw edge. I want to fold that raw edge under so it's not going to be visible and it's not going to fray. And then I'm just going to take this right over that zip tie, just like this. I'm going to make sure I've got all my tails on the correct side. Again, I've done that before, had those on the wrong side and it's not fun. All right, I'm going to bring that around, flip it upside down. We're just going to tie this in a knot. And right here is where I told you don't cut it too short because it, it can be a little bit difficult to tie. So I just trim off those edges there and then we're done. Easy peasy, right? So there's your bow. Okay, I'm going to look through and see if I missed any questions here. Hey, Sylvia. Hey, Lorraine. Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. Another Phyllis. There's Liz. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Hey, Val Berlin. 
Okay, Susan's wanting to know, do I always make my bows to sell the same size? And I, for the most part, I do, Susan, um, except maybe at Christmas time, or sometimes I might have a special request for one uh, either larger or smaller. Um, but for the most part, I do. It's just easy for me to keep in my mind that way. And this is about the same size bow that I typically will use on my wreaths. So, so yeah, I, I do a lot. Oh, rainy and wet in New Boston, Texas. Yuck. I'm not really familiar with New Boston. I'll have to check that out. My boy, he's in Grapevine. My boy and daughter-in-law. All right, let me check YouTube now. Need a bit more sun in Toledo. <laughs> Ethel May, you jumped over to YouTube, I see. Oh, Jamie has a good tip here. She says she uses a clothespin to hold the layers down as she gets the next ribbon ready. That's a good idea. I hear though that the new pro or the new easy bows are a lot tighter. In fact, tight enough where people are having trouble getting the ribbon in, but I'm, I suspect they'll loosen. Raining in Birmingham, too. Oh, gosh. Vernita says she uses floral wire to tie her loops down each ribbon. That's a lot of work, Vernita. <laughs> a lot of work. Hey, Linda from, from Dayton. We've got a Dayton and Toledo. All right. All right, so let's go ahead. You guys want to make another one? I've got um, some Easter ribbon I can show you. And like I said, I do have, I've got the lemon ribbon, and I've got the dot ribbon in my shop. I'm still waiting on the others to come in that, that I showed you originally, but I thought I'm just gonna have to get them out there. If it happens the way it did on Valentine's Day, it'll be past time and they'll get here. So I guess we'll have them for next year though, <laughs> right? Okay, let's make one more. I'll go through this one more quickly though. I'll still talk while I'm doing it, but we'll do it a little quick, more quickly, okay? All right, now, again, I did, this is another ribbon set that I picked out at market, and um, these two ribbons here came in. Isn't that cute? Kind of a, a black and white with the, the mint truck. It's not the red truck, but it's a mint truck with the little bunny and the carrots and such. And I did the same thing uh, as I did with the lemon. I just, you know, started with this ribbon, built my ribbon or my bow out from there. And I found this um, another two and a half inch. <clears throat> and I pulled the colors. This, uh, Ar they call it Argyle. And it came in several colors, but I, I saw that it came in a mint. And I thought that would look really nice with it. Put a little sparkle with it. Um, and I, you know, I love the chenille edges on the ribbons. Then I'm starting to think about what other colors. I'd like to see some more orange in it, and um, and then maybe some more black. And so I found a solid again. And now we talked about the the yellow ribbons, the one reading as a solid. This one, it doesn't read as a solid at all. It's pretty busy right we got two patterns so i'm thinking i definitely need a solid on my one of my two and a half inch or one of my one and a half inch ribbons and i just i found this um kind of bright orange that would pull the color off of the carrots and uh, i also could have gone with the pink right there or if you wanted to you could go with another um mint green uh, they also had this other color green in here. You could have gone that way too, but I chose to go with the orange because I had found this ribbon also, and I thought that would be just perfect. Well, of course, it was one of the ribbons that didn't come in. So uh, I'll show you what I've substituted for it um, out of my stash, but that's how I chose this when I was at market. And that'll, eventually I'll get those two in, but they just didn't come in. These two did. All right, so let me show you. So we've got these two main ribbons. So again, I took both of these over to my stash, walking through my aisles, and I found a very comparable orange, uh, solid orange to the one I already had chosen. Um, 
I really had my heart set on that black ribbon with the orange. I thought that really looked good, but I don't have it. So I'm thinking I need another black. Um, I really didn't want to put a, a sol another solid black here with the solid orange already. Now maybe if I'd have had a patterned orange, I could have done that, but I, it's very seldom I use a solid black. I just don't, I really don't care for it, to be honest, okay? But I did find this um, black and white gingham that I thought would be perfect. We've got, it just kind of pulls in the, the gingham up forward a little bit more. And uh, you know, I get a lot of questions about do, you know, using you know, plaid with plaid, uh, check with check, and you just got to kind of keep your, um, you know, see how you feel about it. If you like it, great, go with it. Um, my rule of thumb is if they're very similar like this, I feel like you can get away with it. Um, if this was a bigger check, I probably wouldn't have done it if, if this one was a bigger check. I would probably, if it was like this size, I probably wouldn't have used it. I wouldn't have used this gingham. I would have tried to find another ging, um, buffalo check. Okay? But I decided to go with that. And um, if I had it, if I had a little bit more of the, like a tiny, uh, say a mint green solid, one of those 5 8 inches ribbons, or I guess you could use the orange too, but I would have liked to have that to finish it, but I don't have it. So, okay. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to do the same pattern. And that's what I suggest. I mean, once you get comfortable with bow making, go ahead and branch out, try to experiment around, see what you like. But try to find a few bow recipes that you are comfortable with and just, you know, get really good at bow making. Then start branching out. Try not to muddy your mind with a, a whole lot of things. I, I think simple is better, is for me. And if you look at my bows, most times I'm doing very similar, just like what Susan was asking. I'm doing very similar things, okay? So again, I'm gonna do a 14-inch um, bow tail. Um, and that leads me to another thing I just thought of too. When it, it also, it helps me save time on my Etsy listings because I already know what my bow loops measure. I already know what my bow measures. So I don't have to think, <laughs> you know, I don't have to go back there and, and remeasure or, or um, go back and change the whole Etsy listing. I already know my measurements are solid. All right, so I'm gonna get 14 inches. And again, we're gonna go a little quicker here. Um, I'm still gonna talk, but we'll go a little quicker. You move this into the center here. All right, good side's gonna be away from me. I'm gonna twist it, push it down. Come out here to about five inches. Good side's away, twist it, push it down. This one is my last loop on this side, so I don't need to twist it. Good side's already up, so I'm just gonna pinch it and tuck, tuck the edges. Come over here to five inches. All right, we've got our first ones done. Let's come down here, let's trim our tail. I'm gonna go ahead and dovetail it. Sometimes I wait until the end to do that. It's easier, really, if you go ahead and do it while you're making the bow, but I forget. All right, so let's go ahead with our bunny. And again, we're gonna do two loops on either side of this one because I want this one to be the main ribbon. So it's, it's got the most, most pattern. Oh, and I just looked at this. This is one-sided, or um, not one-sided, um, one-directional. Has the truck on it. And I think we should be able to, I'm gonna show you something here. We're gonna work with this. All right, yeah, we, we're gonna have to do this a little bit different. I didn't even think about it being one directional, but we're gonna do, deal with it here. I'm gonna show you. Let me go ahead and dovetail. All right, we're gonna come down here. We're gonna bring our tail up just a little bit. Bring this down. And this is the way I do it. Um, if, if you have another way that works for you, 
by all means do it, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay, whoops, I started out the wrong side here. There we go. All right, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to show you how we're going to fix this. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger, okay? Just a little bit bigger than what I've already got. Maybe a half an inch or so. Okay, I'm going to push it down. All right, I'm going to fix this real easy. And you probably can't tell from where you're at, but to me, looking at the bow right side up, this truck was upside down doing it this way. See the truck's upside down. So if you just make it just a little bit bigger to, to account for this extra twist you're going to do. Okay. Now see it comes out pretty even. Okay. All right. We're going to come back over here. This one is already right side up, so I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to take it down here. I'm going to compare it with my other loop. I'm going to twist it. And again, we're upside down. I got my ribbon up, or my, yeah, I got my ribbon on the spool upside down too. All right, so I'm going to make this again a little bit larger than the, the loop before. I'm going to Good side's going away from me. Twist it. All right, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to twist it again. Okay, easy peasy, right? Now you can do this with um, with the vertical one directional ribbon. It doesn't work for the vertical one direction ribbon. All right, I'm going to come back over here, last loop. I'm going to pinch it, tuck it under, push it down. Okay? All right, and I've, got, I've gotten this question a lot too. You know, do you care which way the trucks are going? To me, you know, they're going right side this way. They're coming down this way. I don't care about that. If it bothers you, you can you can adjust it, but I, I don't care about that. Now that... I wouldn't ever leave that up there because, um, you know, in my opinion, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be a professional, and to me, it doesn't look professional to leave it upside down. And it's something that, for my eye, I can't unsee it once I see it. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. So we've got our one loop in between. We've got our two loops on either side. Now, let's come along. Let's do the. Do I want the orange last or not? Yeah, I, I started to say that I would maybe consider putting the um, black next, but I would not do that because I don't want that check right up against that check. So I'm going to go with the solid. All right, let's compare our tail over here. Actually, let's dovetail it first. Compare our tail. Twist it, push it down. This one I'm going to do about four inches. All right, so I got five, I got four. Twist it, push it down. Come over here, about four inches. So there's five, four. Pinch it, tuck under the edges, push it down. All right, so let's compare these two. We're going to trim this and dovetail it. Okay. All right, now let's go ahead with the gingham. And again, we're going to make two loops on either side. Let's go ahead and dovetail. Compare it with our other tail. Twist it, push it down. We're going to make this about three and a half inches. About there. Push it down. 
Actually, let's make that just a bit bigger. All right, come over here, three and a half inches. Here's five, three and a half. Twist it, push it down. And we're going to compare the to our previous loop right here. Twist it, push it down. Over here, compare it, pinch it. Let's push it down. Okay. Get our tail. Try not to cut my finger. <laughs> I was just saying the other day, it's about almost, it's like once a week I cut myself. All right, now let's get our zip tie. And again, I'm going to put it diagonally through these pegs here underneath all the ribbon. Make sure I've got all the ribbon. Bring it around over the top and cinch it down lightly. Alright, let's slide that up. Get it out of the way. Cinch it down where you can trust it a little bit here. Okay, now let's start getting our tails straightened out. And one thing I need to say too, I always come back and you know adjust these tails. Like this one to me, I need to crim a little bit more off of this side. Now if I were making it for myself, I would just leave it and I would adjust it in my wreath. But when I'm doing it to sell, I like to have them even because I don't know what my customer's taste is. And then they can adjust it if they need to. All right. Let's... All right, now let's start back here. Let's get our single loops in the middle. This one's just a little bit short. Okay, now we're good. Get our tail or our bow loops all straightened here, straddling that single loop. Get our orange, get our gingham. Come back down here, fix our tails one more time. They all look good. Let's twist this over. Put our pipe cleaner. Double check, cinch it down, and trim off the back. Okay. All right, now I already had decided while I was making actually this gingham part of the bow. Looking at that, I know I need to bring in some orange. I think that would look really good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this lengthwise like what we did the last time. Cut it right down up through there, about nine or ten inches, give or take. I always wanted to cut it too short, and that's just it's really a pain if you do. All right, we're going to tuck this raw edge under. Go right over the top of that zip tie. Make sure you've got all your tails. Flip it over and tie a knot. All right, now let's trim these off. Flip it back over. That orange helps make bring that center out. That really makes it pop. I think it looks good. Get all your bow loops spread out here. Looks like I got one a little bit short. Let's just that, just a little bit. Okay. And there we go. Cute. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to raise you guys up and I'm going to check for any questions we may have. Okay, don't see it on YouTube. Let me look, check Facebook here. 
Hey, Jewel. There's Cindy, Kathy, Renee. Thank you guys for being here. Oh, Phyllis says it's 75 and sunny in Houston. That sounds perfect. <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, thank you, Ethel May. Hey, Joanne. Thank you, Dee. Yes. And like I said, I try to just work with a few recipes. And even in my wreath making, in my wreath making group, you can ask them. We stick with recipes. And then you just don't have to work so hard at trying to come up with designs. You already know, like I in this recipe, I already know I need two two and a half inch ribbons. I need two one and a half inch ribbons. And I'm going to start with one ribbon and build it out from there. So, okay. So, anybody have any questions? No questions. All right, let me show you two more ribbons that I did get in. I did list these also. These were very popular last year. And I have a couple of different sizes of these. I love these. These really really work really well and um, bows. I haven't made design like a wreath with them before, but I think they're beautiful in bows. I don't I and to be honest, probably the reason I didn't use them in a patriotic wreath last year was I didn't want to waste it because I didn't have very much of it. But um, I do have some of this listed in my shop too. So, And as I said, on this bow, I've got the, the mint ribbon and I've got the um, rabbit with the truck ribbon. And uh, these others would be easy to pick up on your own separately. I just, like I said, I just didn't want to wait any longer to hope that they come in and I couldn't get an idea when they were going to be delivered. So here we are. <laughs> okay. Here we are in 2022. So, all right. Any other questions? I don't see any. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And, um, I said I've got I did put a link for boxmybow.com. That's where my ribbons are listed if you're interested. Plus there's other ones that I don't have out here. I've already, I've got some others listed on my site as well if you're interested. And um, I will be live again Friday on the usual time. Uh, well, I say usual time. I'm going to try to go on Fridays try to go a little bit earlier. Caveat this week, I do have a granddaughter, at least one granddaughter daughter is going to be with me on Friday. So um, she may be in there. It just depends on how things go. But but anyway, I'll have an assistant. Hey, Rhonda. Hey, Izzy. 